Special thanks to Raphael the Pizza Queen for recom- <laughs> And to Fluffy Tacos for recommending Parent, and also to Jasper Harden. Okay, okay, I'm doing it. Oh, and this one came in while I was still writing my commentary, so kudos to I is another as well. Okay, so I'm not going to complain every time the episode is about the parents, because the show is called Parenthood, so like, what the fuck did I expect? But I will point out that there is no actual parenting happening in this scene, so I'm feeling pretty lied to. Hot and shirtless, tattoos, musician, non-committal, yep, this guy's pretty much an amalgam of all the boyfriends that parents stereotypically hate, rather than, you know, an original character. You're ruining my life! I told you we don't have a choice, I'm out of money! That doesn't make sense as a reason to prevent Amber from making her own mistakes. Letting her move in with Damien would save you money. Listen, Max, you don't have to play baseball, not after this season. Listen, I'm not going to force you to do things you don't want to do, except for right now, when that's exactly what I'm doing. But I want you to give this a chance, because it meant a lot to me when I was a kid. Dad readily admits that he's only pressuring his kid to do the thing because it would make himself feel good, yet continues pressuring his kid to do the thing. After the game, why don't we go have some ice cream? No, 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 no. Don't reward your kid with food. Or better yet, don't do behaviorism in general. I think you should let him stay. Like, do we even care about baseball? Hello, voice of reason. I guess I have to take a sin off. Don't think you're off the hook, Hattie. I'm watching you. Men feel the need to express their love through hitting balls. Because no female has ever played a sports ball. Also, playing a sport is symbolic of war and dominance, not love. Also, Christina must learn the difference between trying to live out your dreams vicariously through your children and loving them. Through hitting balls. Slapping butts. Excuse you? That is not a generalization of men. Let me tell you, as a female myself, we absolutely express our love through slapping butts. Look, once he gets his first hit, everything is gonna turn around for him. You'll thank me later, cliche- Wait, that's not a cliche, that's a thing people say in real life. Well, the point is, Adam is a selfish asshole. This costume looks queer as hell, and its name is Candy. Are you trying to make your daughter a furry? Oh wait, what if she already is, and they brought her here because they're good parents? Carry on, then. She slept with you with another man's sperm in her freezer. It's unconscionable. She has to be confronted. Hey. Nope. Actually, the act of sex doesn't obligate her to anything. Maybe if we didn't allow him to wear a pirate costume to school, wait, wait he'd minute, fit in. Nice one, Dad. Way to victim blame your own kid right in front of people who are already looking for someone to blame. Maybe the other kids wouldn't bully him if they had been taught that what a person wears is their own damn business. Take Max to an educational therapist to have him tested to see whether or not she thinks Max can be successful. She? As in, you have a specific one in mind? That sounds more like a school psychologist than an educational therapist. Chinese restaurants in Berkeley, California do not play traditional Chinese music. This is racist. What? My mom is having sex with a guy? How dare she? She thinks that you may have Asperger's. Oh, congratulations. So, what were you crying about? Asperger's? Like autism? No, not like autism. The exact same thing as autism. No. High functioning autistic. autism. You know you fucked up when atypical and vaxxed both take longer to resort to functioning labels than you. Christina, I've seen autistic kids. Because if you've seen something, that makes you an expert on it. There is something ed. wrong with our baby. Well, that seems like the most important bit of information, and maybe what you ought to lead with? Too bad Christina never specifies what is wrong with their baby. Please don't make me be alone with, with this. You're alone because your husband didn't believe you right away? How the fuck do you think Max feels with two allistic parents? How do you know that? Is there not any husband confidential baby. male guy stuff anymore? Invoking the bro code is a sin. Dad, there's something wrong with my son. What do you mean? There's something wrong. When asked for clarification, Adam just repeats himself. Apparently he and Christina have formed a pact of ambiguity, which is like a pact of secrecy, except more annoying. Opossums are cute and precious, how dare you depict them this way? We live in a nation of laws, and when someone doesn't follow those laws, society breaks down. The next thing she does is violate a traffic law by honking the horn when there's no danger. They're really good people, they have a son with Asperger's- Autism parents are the best parents in the world, cliche? Either that or Christina is lying her ass off. It's the second one. It's not the lesson, kid. I've never in my life heard an explanation for why hand flapping is so terrible. Jesus Christ, give me some fucking warning before you show a parent trying to kill his kid. 
diagnosed, devastated, the whole autism destroys marriage myth is completely made up, and the article's thesis is to recommit to your local church? I'm not sure what you hope to learn there, considering the Bible mentions autism the same number of times it mentions abortion. Oh yay, fad diets. This isn't funny anymore. Can he get to the good websites now? Of course not. Special emphasis on taxing, overwhelming, struggle, and yeah, you're probably gonna feel those ways if you're expecting to. Honestly, this offends me just as much as the autism search. It's all about accepting. Ah, I see the word acceptance was ruined long before it was popularized. Max hasn't hasn't even been diagnosed yet, so we're, we're not even sure if he has Asperger's. And talking to a neurotypical psych professional gets you no closer to being sure. At least you're meeting another autistic person. That's a step in the right direction. Wait, why isn't Max here? Have you changed Max's diet yet? Oh no, I didn't think they were gonna follow up on that. Abort! Mayday! Crisis words! We need to change his diet? Oh god, yes. Gluten-free, no wheat, no sugar, no chemicals. Casein-free too. Oh yeah, make sure no chemicals enter your son's body. That's a great idea! We have a nutritionist that you are gonna love. Stop! Back the fuck up! You need to run a fucking allergy panel before you go meddling with your son's diet. And when you do, you need a dietitian, which is a real doctor, not a fucking nutritionist. Our entire lives are on these cards. Red is diet, yellow is therapies, green is meds, blue is aids and respite. Don't forget about pink. Oh my god. Pink. Pink is our sex life. Sounds like you did this to yourself. Like you're the type of person who prefers this sort of hyper-organization, and having a kid just gave you that extra push to finally do it. Also, clearly it should be white for diet, green for therapies, blue for meds, yellow for housekeepers, and pink for sex. God, what is wrong with you? Eventually you're gonna need an in-house aid. Oh, and a behaviorist. Is that a drowsy in the background? Oh, sorry, I was just trying to find a distraction from wanting to kill myself. She took that photo way too close for that to be the result. Just tell me the truth. We think Max has Asperger's. Oh look, it's our friend generic sitcom lying to contrive future conflict. And this isn't even a sitcom, it's a dramedy, but it's neither funny nor dramatic. Hey Max, sweetheart, you know, maybe you could earn some TV time tonight by trying your food. They don't even need a behaviorist, they've got that down pat already. If you don't eat your dinner, then you won't get TV time. Using coercion to put things in a child's body that he doesn't want put in his body. What? Lord, not oh. punishment. See, they even know how to play child abuse apologist bingo. Max is very high functioning, but I do find that Max's behaviors are consistent with an Asperger's diagnosis. The word but in that sentence should give you a clue to why high functioning isn't a compliment. We can work through this. It's not an insurmountable problem. It's not a problem at all, you dickhead. Yeah, unfortunately, there is no cure for Asperger's. You mean, fortunately. You would be correct if you said the exact opposite of what you just said. What do you suggest we do to get him out of the pirate costume? So the first step is not to, to wrench Max out of his comfort zone. This guy is clearly not a behaviorist, which is a good thing, but it also means the writer just looked up a list of autism therapies and copy-pasted it into the script without actually knowing what they are. It's official. Max has Asperger's. Even by your own logic of neurotypical psych professionals being the ultimate authority, it still wouldn't be official because he didn't give you a written report. If you get booted, then maybe that hoe won't try to raw dog your husband. The only thing that would make this other woman is hot so I automatically suspect her of sleeping with my husband plot more heterosexually cringy is if she actually was. Never. Ever. In a million years. And, you, and she's, she's a tard. Oh yay, the word tard. So what now? Now you go onto a site like Craigslist that it's been established you know about and meet autistic adults. She's not gonna say that. Of course she's not gonna say that. We start to work. What does that even mean? Alright, this moment is genuinely cute. Adam finally drops the fix-it attitude and remembers to just play with his kid. Joel told me about your nephew Max and his new condition. Hey Joel, that's not your information to disclose, asshole! I got this in Tibet last summer. Will you please give it to your brother for me? For comfort and good luck. As far as woo-woo energy healing goes, this is pretty harmless, but it's still woo. Do you remember his uncle, the one who married the transsexual? What's amazing is that line would still be unimportant and unfunny, even if you said transgender. We just saw this boy down the hall uh, in the classroom. He was dressed up like a sailor, sailor, which is just like Max with his pirate costume. It's Kellen. Kellen James. He's a good kid. You are not allowed to tell them his name! Our son Max is somewhere in between. He's yeah. too high-functioning for a special needs program, 
but he doesn't he has, really... He has real trouble fitting into a mainstream school. Mm -hmm. He needs some help. It's almost like functioning labels are bullshit and only make things more difficult. You want me to teach you how to swim like a fish? All right. Swim to me. That's not teaching. That's just telling her to do it. This is an engine you can work on. Isn't that beautiful? Um, no. It's a bunch of rusty metal. I've never understood this. Do real-life car enthusiasts call their engines beautiful? Something wrong? No, what? Because you're saying the same thing over and over again. Which is what you do when something's wrong. Ooh, yeah. Lying is a great way to strengthen that parent-child trust. Hey, I just realized they haven't told him he's autistic yet. Parents didn't show up for the big game or similar school activity cliché. And not only is it a cliché, it's because they were too distracted by their autistic child to pay attention to the normal one. Huh. I guess atypical is a ripoff of this. Why is everybody acting like this Max thing is big news? Great point. Max has always been autistic. Oh wait, that's not the point she's making. He knocked over the cake at my 10th birthday because he was afraid of the candles. Because no neurotypical four-year-old has ever made a mess. Also, implying that it only happened once means you found a solution after that. We had to change rooms because he couldn't be by the air conditioner. These things do not belong in the same list. The first one was something he did, the second is an access need. Whenever he wants to watch TV, we all have to give up. Jesus Christ, it's like they consulted Autism Speaks on this. No, an eight-year-old child is not a hulking superpower that you must bow down to. $220? Look at that. It's Hattie's cell. Yeah, she's racked up like a gazillion minutes on this thing. That's not a real number. Yeah, to one number over and over again. Who are you calling now? I'm gonna call the mystery number and find out who this belongs to. Yeah, I suppose you could switch to an unlimited plan and save money, or, you know, just violate your daughter's privacy. Her room is in our house, so technically we're not breaking into anything. Technically you are. Legally, sure, it's yours. But technically? Nah, bro, you a dick. What about her computer? Her right. Facebook page. Right. Crosby has been a parent for, what, a few weeks now? And already the reckless disregard for children's autonomy has infected him. Says so she's in a relationship, has been for a month. That is not Facebook. That is Finder, the file manager for Macintosh. A photo album in Finder will not tell you that the user is in a relationship how long or with whom. Your cell phone bill was over $200 this month. That's over a thousand minutes. So about 16 hours in a month? That's not that much. That's about 2% of her time. Or if you don't count sleeping hours, 3%. Also, I did some digging around and the only figure I could find for 2010 cell phone rates was $40 for 450 minutes, or about $90 for a thousand. So you shouldn't be paying over $200 just for the minutes, unless you're on one of those pay-as-you-go plans at 20 cents a minute. But you know you have a teenage daughter, so if that's the case, I think that's on you. You guys broke into my room and you hacked into my computer? Wait a second, miss. You have no right to get angry with us. You have been going out with this boy for over a month without telling okay. us. Gee, I wonder why she doesn't trust you. She has every reason to be angry. My God, you expect me to sympathize with the parents? Because I fucking don't. It's like Elsa Gardner all over again. No, it's worse, because in this one, they're not even pretending that the children are the main characters. The parents are the emotional core, and I'm supposed to root for them. <laughs> Max, please don't pull the petals off the oh, flowers. No, it's okay, it's fine. You hear that, Adam? Sometimes rounding out a sensory diet is more important than preservation of property. You could learn a thing or two from this guy. He doesn't. Amber was 15 when she hooked up with Damien. And they were... Yes, they were. The question Adam wouldn't finish is, and they were having sex, which, yes, that's what hooking up means. She wanted to move in with him and start their lives together. Well, I don't think Hattie's there yet. I mean, I'm sure she's not. I believe you, but it's right around the corner and you have to do everything you can to postpone it. That is terrible advice. What you should be doing is one, earning her trust back, and two, teaching her how to do it safely. You have to shut them down. No right. phone, no email, okay. no computer, right. no texting. Right. More terrible advice. No leaving the house, no nothing, and then when that fails, you just go to plan B. Which is what? 
move. Even more terrible advice! Welcome to my world, brother! That sounds like an I told you so, but he's only in this situation because he did parent like you. I hacked into your computer to find out what's going on with you. Or you could have, you know, talked to her. You didn't even try. What if I don't want you to know what's going on I don't care, Hattie. I'm your father. I have a right to know. Actually, you don't. Being updated on your daughter's relationships is not, at least in the United States, a right protected by law. That's it. No more cell phone. No more texting. Following terrible advice. Rebelling. It's... It's just part of growing up. No, 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 I'm gonna stop you right there. Teenage Rebellion is a stereotype, it's bullshit, and it's gaslighting. Having a different personality and interests from your parents? That's natural. Rebelling against them? No. That is not some kind of social development stage. It's what people do when they still live under their parents' legal domain, but are old enough to understand that they have shitty abusive parents. And the only reason we think otherwise is because of those shitty abusive parents putting forward a myth to cover for their own responsibility. Ooh, you got me riled up now! The fuck, dude? Why are you calling them? The answer is obvious. Take him to an ER and call mom. When it comes to dads and their daughters dating, it's, it's like, it's primordial. It's like that lizard part of their brain kicks in. Right, because it couldn't possibly have anything to do with paternalism, toxic masculinity, sense of ownership. You know, honey, I think he's, I think he's more scared than anything. Patriarchy, loss of control, religious ideas of purity. What happened to him? Crosby's lies keep getting stupider. Where does it leave you if he decides to tell her what really happened? Camille, this crisp is amazing. Do I sense some uh, nutmeg? Camille? Camille? It took me two years to call her that. I still can't. Can I call her Camille? No. I never understood the convention to avoid a person's first name out of deference. Like, that's her name, isn't it? Shouldn't using someone's name be the most respectful way to address them? And why are there different rules depending on the relative ages of you and the person you're addressing? Do children not deserve respect? All right, soapbox over. Mr. Sears really, really hard. Well, I can only imagine then what his reaction is going to be when I tell him that you did not write this paper. Wait, what? No, 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 you, you, you can't tell him. Can't you just, can't you just punish me, please? Haha, <laughs> sitcom trope where kids ask for parental punishment instead of something they see as worse. Yeah, no, that's not funny. That's a sign of abuse. I didn't tell him. Because he's so cool, right? No, not because he's so cool. Because he believes in you. And for some stupid reason, so do I. Some stupid reason? You're her mother. You're supposed to. Do not walk away from me when I'm talking to you. Maybe you guys could learn a few parenting tips from Steve's parents. Rule number one being give your kids just a little bit of privacy. I hate Steve's parents. I hate them. Yeah, how dare they make me look bad by... Being better parents. Help me figure out what to do about Yo-Yo and Hattie. He's just constantly touching her. Well, maybe it's a compliment, you know? He's showing you how comfortable he feels around you. Well, that is exactly the opposite of how I want him to feel. There are only two constants in this universe. The first is change. And the second is that teenagers will not stop fucking, no matter how much you try to rule their lives through fear. We can't make our children into people they're not. Thanks, that's very... Buddhist. No, that's called good parenting. My god, I just assumed the autism stuff would be the worst offense. How am I supposed to get on board with the protagonists in a show about parenthood when they're all terrible parents? This show is seriously making me root for the woo-woo kale and yoga lady. He's just not who I thought he was. Oh, Hattie... might be the best moment of my life. My daughter is in a great deal of emotional distress. This delights me. I thought you were playing ball with, with Uncle Adam. Yeah, he canceled. I don't know, he had to take Maxie at ice cream or something. I don't know. Ice cream? What do you mean? You guys had a plan. He had a prior plan that he forgot about. That's a pretty common reason to cancel. And these last few days have been great playing ball with those boys. It was almost like Max didn't have a situation. I'm sorry, it's been a while since DSM-4. Was unable to play baseball part of the diagnostic criteria for Asperger's Syndrome? Also, the thing with Max is called autism, not titty fuck. You're allowed to say autism on NBC. What's he saying? Nothing. Oh, okay. 
Uh, well, what are we going to do about this? Nothing. 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 It is what it is, and there's nothing we can do about it. And you shouldn't want to. Well, can I still hate the guy? No! He's great! You have no reason to hate him! This episode comes with a trigger warning for ABA, and the fact that I have to say that is a sin. Skip ahead three minutes to avoid it. If there were a behavior of Max's, you could... Wave a wand and change, what would it be? You haven't even met the guy yet, and you're already deciding on target behaviors? You have no idea what function they serve. You're operating solely on parental annoyance. And he has tan tantrums. Temper tantrums. They're called meltdowns. Actually, we haven't seen a meltdown either. Not on screen, anyway. What we have seen is Max calling out his parents for breaking their own rules and promises. Max doesn't really have any friends. Okay. Why don't we start there? Oh no, neurotypical therapist is going to teach him social skills? This never goes well. We've been doing what you want for 20 minutes. It's time to try one of my games. Dog training! Wait, that's going to get repetitive really fast if I just say dog training every time the episode depicts dog training. Okay, for this one, the sin is the concept of preferred activity time. Max, you get to choose whichever one you want. He gets to choose between Stratego and Battleship? Whoa, that's so many choices! By the way, if Max doesn't pick Stratego, I'm adding another sin. He doesn't like board games at all. Okay. We've tried. When you make a deal, he has to hold up his end of the bargain. Taking away a child's basic needs and then forcing him to bargain in order to get them back. This is the deal, okay? Every minute you play one of these games, you get a sticker. Stickers. Why is it always fucking stickers? So you get up to 20 stickers, cash them in, you get the book. The title of this episode is How to Indoctrinate Your Child into Capitalism Without Even Giving Him Actual Money. You make it seem so easy. Yeah, that's why behaviorism is so marketable. It's easy, and visible changes happen quickly, and you don't notice the long-term effects of its trauma until years down the line. I find myself up late at night just worrying about Max and is there something we should have tried? Something that would have made him not be autistic? Uh, first of all, autism is inborn. Second, fuck you maybe? Just a little bit? Why do half the scenes in this show rely on characters interrupting each other at work? That is not generally seen as socially acceptable behavior, considering someone could get fired. It happens in every episode, yet it's rarely acknowledged and doesn't make sense. I guess it's a stylistic choice? Well, if I stopped to point it out every time, we'd be here all day, so I'm just gonna add a sin and move on. Adam's a good dad. He is not. Well, yeah, he's a great dad. And definitely not that. Christina wears her makeup to bed. No sins were found in this scene. It's an entire Sunday afternoon off. I'm sure there are plenty of other things you'd rather be doing. We're really making strides with a sticker system right now, and I'd hate to derail that. The most dangerous villains are those who genuinely believe they're doing the right thing. Is he hot? Yes, okay. I mean, right. that's not the point, I but mean, yes, no, he's scruffy, like, he looks like Mark Ruffalo. Eh, he looks more like Johnny Depp. I see Amber happier, I see her engaged, and I don't want to see her backslide, that's I all. I see those things. You're not the only good parent. Um, neither of you are good parents. What do you think about uh, making a little overtime? That's not how professional child abusers get paid. They're employed through an agency. Live and let live. I mean no harm to anyone. I am an irrational hard ass with rage issues. Don't piss me off. We wanted to do that fathers act like their daughters are property thing, but Amber's father is in another county, so uh, get the grandfather to do it. Basically, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask you if you could tell me about, you know, some of the first signs that you saw with Max. Christina did not figure out that Max is autistic. His school did. What were you guys talking about? about? Nothing, babe. Fucking tell him, you coward! I am 100% sure that you have nothing to worry about. That's not what she asked. Well, I'm not sure. Just a second ago, you were 100% sure. That is the fastest confidence drop I've ever seen. She counted the number of rubber bands. Unlike neurotypical kids who never, ever count things. The more you know. She's so utterly fixated on it that she cannot make eye contact anymore. If a child, no, if a person wants a thing, they're going to look at the thing. That's not autism. I'm going to give you Dr. Pelican's number, and he's our doctor that, that we use for Max. He's uh -huh. amazing, and he'll be able to tell you if anything's going on, which I really don't think that there is anything wrong. He's a psychologist who assesses for autism, not for anything wrong syndrome. Oh, that's so okay. stupid. It's I'm sorry. Stupid. I don't it's know. not stupid at all. The 
intense worrying over something harmless is pretty stupid. I'm a horrible person, honey. Finally, you realize it. When Julia told me there might be something wrong with Sydney, she didn't tell you there might be something wrong with Sydney. She told you Sydney might be autistic. Part of me felt glad and happy. That's how you're supposed to feel. The appropriate response to I think my child might be autistic is congratulations. You're horrible too. Correct. Look at Sydney compared to Max. There's no way that these kids have the same thing. Right, because that would make Sydney an autistic girl, and those don't exist. Maybe she has ADD. That's practically the same thing. She tests way above average intelligence for her age. Intelligence is a nonsense concept made up to oppress disabled people. There's an old expression: if you love someone, set them free. If they come back, they're yours. If they don't. They never were. Not following your own advice. Also, Amber did have two months Damien free and then came back to him. I mean, not physically. He had to drive to Berkeley, but she called him and asked him to do that. I'm out here quoting Jonathan Livingston Siegel. That's an odd way to pronounce "I ain't much, baby, but I'm all I've got." Daughters hate their mothers. I think it's a law of nature. See previous comment about teenage rebellion. Tony Atwood is always a sin. Chocolate is not good for your heart. That was a hoax. Did you buy that bra for Steve? Mom, hmm. you know Steve doesn't have boobs. I'm not gonna buy him a bra. <laughs> oh, Hattie, you're the best. We're Americans. That's right, and we're an honest people. USA, USA. Are you seriously gonna keep me here because I'm wearing this stupid bra? Of course not. That's it's a bra. So. Yes, I am. Oh no! Her boobs don't magically hold themselves up. Hey, Max, stay in the back. Why? The car stopped. What's the problem here? We just had a small emergency at home. Lying. Well, I don't care if I'm being unreasonable. Seriously, how am I supposed to see this guy's point of view? If you tell me to murder somebody, then I have to do it. Yes. So your house rules supersede the law. Well, then I better not hear you make any more "I technically own the house" excuses. And you're not wrong. There is a double standard. If you realize that it's a double standard, why are you enforcing it? Do you think double standards are a good thing? That's not fair. Thanks. But then again, neither is the world. The world isn't fair, so I don't have to be fair either. Cliche slash thing that people cliche. Fine. I did it. I broke the vase. Are you happy now? No, I'm not happy. You won, okay? You won. Sweetie, it's not about winning and losing. It's about being honest. Which is why I'm being dishonest about the fact that this power struggle was absolutely about winning. The author of this book is a psychic. His name is Noel, and、uh, he's a real interesting kid. Yeah. And you know, you might, you might like him. Adam and Christina are finally taking Max to meet another autistic person, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, they have their pact of ambiguity in full effect. When what they should say is, "He's autistic. You're autistic. It's important to have at least one friend who can relate." Max is not feeling so great. Diarrhea. Noel had diarrhea a couple weeks He ago. He did. You might think the problem with this line is that nobody wants to hear about diarrhea, especially considering most people are eating while they're watching. And you know what? Yeah, I will add a sin for that. But the more egregious offense here is that. Parental obsession with our poop is the autism equivalent of cis people's obsession with genitals. Two beers. Is that cool? Steve, don't like this. Unbelievable, Steve. You know, you got a lot of nerve. You kids coming in here. I have several questions about this. First off, does this golf cafe not have cameras on the register? Granted, management will only check the footage if something else is amiss. But I mean, that happens. If anyone does anything off policy today, you'll not only get fired, you'll go to jail, and so will Hattie and Steve. Okay. The second question is, why does this cafe have the 16-year-old at the front counter that serves beer? Even if the customers are over 21, she's not allowed to serve it. Why would you have a picnic on the golf course? It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's probably code for like what doing. I'm serious. I think it's like a thing because I saw couples going out there with like blankets. Yeah, having a blanket with you doesn't mean picnic is code for sex. Picnics often involve blankets. You owe me a sticker for this. You got it. Oh, the parents are continuing the ABA. Of course they are. Namaste. That means hello. So what? Now we're relegated to the short bus. We have to hang out with people like the Lessings instead of cool people like the Genitazios. Whether they have a disabled kid or not doesn't seem to be the deciding factor here. I didn't know NBC shows were allowed to have on-screen porn. 
If you thought I was gonna add a sin for that, you don't know me very well. Now where did all this wisdom come from? From Fresno, of course. The wisdom capital of the world? Oh no, please tell me Amber hooking up with her cousin's ex is not where this is going. Not that there's anything wrong with doing that, it's just knowing the level of writing here, that would be a whole contrived drama. Ah, damn it, she fucking does. I have you know. to figure out how to get that back. That's okay, a valuable baseball. A signed baseball is only valuable in the sense that you can sell it for money, which already happened. I wasn't feeling in the moment at all. Why would she? I thought you were the guy. Can't you just feel in the moment whenever you want? What? No. Mindfulness is not a gendered activity. Ha, <laughs> that goalie ain't doing shit. And now the 16-year-old is serving booze out in the open. This would not happen. Good old reliable SpongeBob, communicating that it's a children's show while staying comfortably familiar to baby boomers. Can you help me remember exactly when and why this pet promise was made? Last Tuesday, his progress report, no tantrums. Conditioning rewards on not having a meltdown is just teaching your kid to go through trauma quietly. Do you want to order something like pizza? I just saw somebody eating it on TV. It looks so good. As we all know, the way something looks on TV is always representative of the real thing. Go get dressed. Oh no, I am dressed. No, really dressed. It's an art show, not a job interview. Who are you trying to impress? Stay at home dad. What do I have to do to get that job? You have to marry and have a kid with someone who makes enough money to support both of you. You would not believe what I am going through at your brother's house. You know that eight-year-old kid runs the joint? Ooh, yeah, taking over the TV for a half hour. Such a tyrant. And the girl's virginity's hanging by a thread. Virginity is a nonsense concept made up to oppress women. Look at her, flirting and giggling. It's like she's in the Sex in the City movie. Flirting and giggling are not cheating. The previous ten episodes have strongly implied that Hattie has no friends other than her boyfriend. She never talks about them, she never visits them or brings them over, but when this episode demands a slumber party, suddenly she has three close friends ready to go. Basically what I'm saying is this show is guilty of lazy world building. You go look around the house with mom, grandpa and I look outside, okay? We'll get Hattie and her friends to help, okay? See, I, so, this is where a dog would come in handy. Hey, Zeke, this may come as a shock, but, uh, dogs also run away sometimes. This woman's reaction to having her wine stolen is, huh? Oh, okay. When you've been married 46 years, you come and talk to me. Until then, you just back the hell off. Man, there's gotta be a word for nonsensical cliche expressions, but in real life. Oh wait, there is. It's called a logical fallacy. Max kind of looks like a turtle. Oh, that is the actor's actual face you're talking about. A change of jacket will not fix your botched plastic surgery face. Shut up. Trigger warning for Autism Speaks. Skip ahead six minutes to avoid it. Hey, maybe we could use this for the autism walk on Sunday. No. Walk for autism. Stop. Autism Speaks walk is this Sunday. Oh, just shoot me. Let's walk for those kids with autism! No, Max. You use your legs for walking, not your autism. Adam and I really haven't told him. Okay. No, it's not okay. He doesn't really know that he has anything wrong. He doesn't have anything wrong. I feel like I'm lying to him. You are. There's no perfect answer to the question of when do you tell a child? Yes, there is. Oh, did you want to know what the perfect answer is? It's this. Tell your child they're autistic as soon as you find out yourself. Say it casually and emphasize the positives. The world will do the opposite and you have to try your best to fight against that. Allow your child the opportunity to grow up with the word autism as familiar and free of stigma. And for God's sake, find some autistic friends for your kid and for yourself. Also, don't do ABA. You can never say don't do ABA too often. It's different for every kid. So I'm not doing anything wrong? No, not at all. Yes, she is! I think it's important to not burden Max with information that he's not going to be able to process just yet. You are a bad person. Well, as they get older, it really becomes more of a challenge socially. Max already has a lackluster social life. Did you miss the part where he has zero friends? That's great. This just gets more fun, doesn't it? Not with that attitude. You want me to get some paint? Nah, screw him. We'll just leave it up. Screw them all! If you do that, you'll have a lot more bitter exes to deal with. Major headline for me? 
I didn't have sex. Virginity is a nonsense concept. Make hey. For autism too? I want to walk in front of a train. We are gonna win. In an autism walk, nobody wins. Max doesn't stim, unlike the Lessing kid. Look at him, not stimming his heart out. Let's put on your shoes and let's go log in some miles for autism. Let's decide where autism is flying to before we worry about saving up the miles. You can't go through life allowing your pain to dictate how you behave. That's what pain is for. This isn't about you, it's not about Amber, this is about Max. You haven't told Max he's autistic yet, so no, I'm calling bullshit. This is about you and your shoes. Asking you to do this is being on your side in a bigger way. I'm not gonna force you to go, but I'm asking you to do this for me. You see, pressuring you into joining me in my thing is really for your own good, but also I'm asking for me. But it's really for you, but it's also for me. The only team here is Team Give the Rights a Bunch of Money. You can't do this to me now! We I'm all like have to go as a family! Because people who didn't want to go are definitely gonna have a good time. Sometimes being the perfect parent just isn't worth the blood on the floor. Sarah is acting like the opposite of a perfect parent in every possible way. Also, if there's blood on the floor, I'm pretty sure your parenting has room for improvement. The color blue. Blatant lies. Someone had to pay someone to make this shot possible, and I don't know which direction is worse. Walk now for autism speaks. The best phrase for inspiring sentences that begin with, I don't condone violence, but... These four guys can all go to hell. <clears throat> I mean, uh, all veterans are heroes, every last one of them, especially the bad ones. To help change the future for those who struggle with autism spectrum disorders. Just everything about that sentence. Everything about this shot! This talking mound of filth mispronounces the family name, which is presumably supposed to be funny, but then inexplicably pronounces the name correctly the second time. Team Braverman! Adam Braverman. Future Max will be traumatized by this memory. This is for my son Max. It is not. Also, way to make everyone think you just outed Max without his consent. I mean, you kinda did. Autism Speaks wanted everybody to have a certificate. They are really appreciative. Wow, a certificate! That must have cost them, like, a dollar! I worked so unbelievably hard to try to get my family to be there, and I failed and you succeeded. I'm still waiting for someone to use words like hate or scam as their reason for not going. We had a ridiculous fight. You mean you had a ridiculous adult tantrum. Eighth annual Bay Area Walk Now for Autism Speaks. Stop saying its name! That's free advertising! Why did we give the money to autism? First of all, they don't. And second, that sentence makes no sense at all. Plenty of other charities. Other charities? We haven't counted to one yet. Oh my god! <gasps> Black hair! Dogs and cats living together! Mass hysteria! Well, I didn't tell her it was okay to do that. It's not your body. You have no say. Hit and run. I think that you're doing a great job with Amber. You're an incredible mother. You are wrong on both accounts. This coat's screaming chick magnet to me. Don't force your decadent heterosexual lifestyle onto your child. I've been finding puzzle pieces of us. Puzzle pieces. They still haven't told Max. 